Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, I want to go over Playwright's capabilities to create and maintain automated visual regression tests. It's really cool, so let's jump into it and we'll talk about it as we go through. At the moment, all I've done is I've got a basic test, which is just going to the commitquality.com website. A uh, link to this will be in the description as well, so you can follow along with this. Now in here, all I wanna do is I wanna say, cert that the page looks how it should look compared to a screenshot. To do this, we can say await, expect, and we're just gonna pass through the page because at the moment we're just going to take the whole page and there's a custom uh, assertion method called to have screenshot and that will work completely fine if we leave it like this however i'm not going to do that this would take a screenshot every time this line hits for the page and compare it to an existing screenshot of course the moment there is no existing screenshot uh, which means our test will actually fail the first time because there's no quote unquote golden file to compare against. If I was to execute this, what would happen is a test would fail and a screenshot with an auto-generated name would appear. You'd have a folder here, which you'll see in a second, and you'd have the auto-generated name. I wanna go by my kind of best practice standards where I always say to add a name of the file. So I'm gonna name it computers.png. It just makes it a little bit easier and you've got more control of what you're writing then. If I execute this test, like I said, what we should see is a failure, but we should also see that our golden file has then been generated. So you can see here we've got uh, the Playwright HTML report generated. That's because in my Playwright config file, I have the report as set to HTML here. I'd suggest if you haven't done this, doing this, because I am going to be touching on this in a little bit when we cover failures. But if I quit out of this and I scroll up, we can see a snapshot doesn't exist at this location called computers, chromium win32.png, and then it's right in one for us. And like I said, you've now got this visual test snapshot folder, which is auto-generate based off the spec name we have. If I open this, what we can see is our snapshot is now being generated and you can see that our computers text has been added on and you've also got these extra bits called chromium and win32 so when you create screenshots in playwright it does append a few extra things for you chromium being the project we're working on so this i could be running this in say firefox and this could still stay chromium it's being based off whatever i name the project so for example if I rename this to say subscribe and I rerun this test, we're going to see a failure again and a new a new file generated here. You might have just seen it. Let's close the HTML report down. And now you've got computer subscribe. So this part is whatever the project name you're running. So I'm going to change this back to Chromium for now and actually delete this file. And then you've got the second part, which is the platform you're running on. So Win32. So if you're running off a Linux box, this would be Linux instead. And that's how all that kind of fits together. It's really useful because if you're running visual tests against different operating systems, I have seen issues in the past where there are different pixel ratios and things don't completely match up against a Windows versus Linux box was so definitely something to remember, which is why I guess Docket is going to be pushed for when you're doing these kind of visual regression tests. That's the kind of basics of doing the most basic regret visual test you can do. However, there's a few extra things I want to show you that you're probably going to be using in your day-to-day -day workflow to make your life a lot easier and make sure your tests are not going to be flaky. So let's just clear all of this and we'll create a new test. Let's remove that. We'll keep basic test there. So we've got it as an example. We'll copy this and we'll name this one full page. Now, under the hood, Playwright actually uses the pixel match library. So you can actually Google for pixel match match npm package and it'll give you some information on that but that's what all this screenshot capability is using under the hood with that it means we can add custom options to things so i've got full page here so you might see here you've got your screenshot but this isn't exactly the full page you've got the nav bar and you've got what we see in our viewport but if i actually go to commitquality.com there's more on the page you've got a show more button you want to add product so you might not be happy with just seeing what you're seeing in your custom viewport well we can change that what we can do is we can add an extra option here and we can say full page and we'll set it to true 
Now then, let's add a dot only onto this test, and I'm going to execute it. Once again, it's going to fail the first time. Oh, let's actually close that because I haven't changed the computer's PNG name. So let's change that to computer's full page. Hit save, and now let's rerun that. And it's going to fail first time because we don't have that golden screenshot yet. Let's close these down in the report. Once again, gives us here that doesn't have it and it's right in the actual for us. Now then, if I go to this full page, you're going to see there's, there's been a screenshot of the full page here, unlike this one, where it's the exact same config setup we have, but it's actually zoomed out to get the full page of everything. Now, if I do rerun this test, let's just hit clear, we should see it should fully pass because nothing on the website would have changed. So there we go, we've got one pass, and you can see it was very quick as well to load it up, take the shape screenshot and compare against it. Definitely really useful. Now, you might want to do this, but you might have a problem where, let's say, let's go to the website, where we might say, okay, what if these were dynamic variables here where you've got product two, product one, and you didn't want these. You want to check the whole page, but you want to mask the name value in each of these rows. Well, that's that's easy enough to do as well. So let's create a new test. And let's say full page with masking. Now then what I can do is let's change this to full page hyphen mask. We'll keep the full page property there, but we'll also add something called mask. And what you can do with mask is pass through an array of locators that you want to mask. So I can say page dot, uh, let's say, I think it's a test ID, get by test ID. Let's grab the test ID of all these name values. So let's inspect that. There we are, yeah, it's just called name, great. And they all should have the same. So if I say get mask by test ID of name, now then, let's run this test, which once again, we're going to see that it fails first time because there's no golden screenshot. Okay, that's fine. Let's close that down. Scroll up. You can see it doesn't exist. Now then, what you're going to see is when I actually click on this one, you can see, look, it's masked it all out. So it doesn't matter if any of these values change now in this name column our test will not fail. We, we would add a bit more reliability in making our tests a little bit more robust by doing this because we don't necessarily check up, care about the values there. We just care about the look and feel of the whole page. So once again, now then, if I was to rerun this test, we'll see that the test will pass. Perfect. And that's also not going to worry about whatever these values are. We've completely masked them out. Awesome. So let's clear this. Now, this is kind of just how you do it for full pages and everything. But what if we want to scope to, say, just the the table here? So we don't want the full page. We just want to compare a screenshot of what this component is, so this table. Well, that's easy enough to do as well. Let's uh, copy this just to make life a little bit easier. We'll get rid of all the options we can pass through. And we'll say here, computers table uh, locator. And what we can do instead, oh, we got changed the name. Uh, let's say, oh, just a table. So all this is exactly the same, but now we can say, just get it by the locator here. So we can say page dot locator. I'll have to see what value I can use for this. So let's inspect this. There we are. We've got a class of product list table, which applies to everything here, but we're not going to look for the filter. We're not going to look at show more add product or even the nav bar. So let's add that in a dot for the class product list table. Now then if I save this and run this test by adding dot only onto here, if I say NPX playwright test, what you see is our golden screenshot has now been generated. And if I go into computer's table locator, which is the name of this PNG we just created, you'll see now that it's scoped to only um, what we see in, in the viewport when, when we cut it down to this. Now, once again, you can add extra options onto this so we can mask things out. We can do exactly the same kind of things. You can try them from up the top here.
So we could say, let's take mask, for example. And let's, uh, do, do, do. let's rename the screenshot list uh, table with mask. Let's rerun this. Of course, it's going to fail because the golden screenshot has not been created yet. Let's close that down. Now let's rerun it. Of course, I've made a mistake there. I put it in the locator rather than there. So it's product list table there, but this is the one we needed to change, of course. Silly mistake on my part. So let's rerun that now. And we'll see the golden screenshot will be created. It says it doesn't exist. And then if I click onto this one, you can see once again, we've masked out all the uh, locators with the data test ID of name, awesome. So I kind of give you a run through of how to take screenshots of full pages, how to take screenshots of specific locators, uh, but we haven't really touched on what happens on failures. So let's say, for example, then, that we remove the page, locate on this and just say page to have screenshot, which of course, what's gonna happen is we're gonna take a screenshot of the page and then we're gonna compare it with the screenshot, which is this one with mask, which of course is going to fail because one, we've got this part masked out, but two, it's not the full page, this one is scoped. So let's see what happens um, when we have these failures. Okay, so failed as we expect. If I scroll up then, it tells you that there's issues with this. Expected this, received this, and we've got a diff here. Now, nothing, no, this isn't really gonna make much sense to you just by reading in the command line. You can see here that it's trying to give you a bit more information about like the size of uh, the screenshot that you've got, the ratio difference and all of that. But where the value from this is gonna come is if we open up the HTML report that's generated, Generated. If you don't have that selected, like I said, go to your Playwright config and set your reporter to HTML. Now then, let's open this and have a little look. First of all, you can see the failures, exactly what a command line has output in the call log. But scroll down and here you've got the diff of all the differences. You've got the actual and the expected. So you can see actual here has the nav bar, filter by product name. You've got the masking part here. Um, Oh, because we still have the mask set on in the options. I I didn't remove that, I'm guessing. So let's, yep, I didn't remove the mask in. So ignore that part. But you can see the diff then is showing you've got all these different things. So in this case, I'd probably say the actual and expected is more than enough for you to see, okay, what the problem is. But there's going to be cases where this diff is going to come in really handy. Like I said, you can see it through the HTML report, or you can go to Playwright report if this is where you've got all your items saved, and you can see the files inside the data folder as well. So if I reveal this, go into data, you've got these screenshots here of um, actual expected in your diff as well. But I would definitely suggest going through the report because it just makes life a lot easier. I did touch on that you could have minor differences. So let's undo what we had here. I'm going to now, I'm going to actually create a new test for this because I don't want to get any of this confused. So it's going to be exactly the same. We'll take the masking off just to make things a lot simpler. All we do in then is we say and expect the product list table to have the screenshot. And this one we'll say with small difference and we'll say pixel ratio and you'll understand why I'm naming this pixel ratio in a second. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run this so I can get my goal and screenshot. Okay, so let's close that. And here we've got with small difference. Now I want to imagine, I want you to imagine that instead of me editing this file, that someone has changed something on the web page. So I'm going to actually reveal this in File Explorer, and I'm going to open this with Paint. I'm just going to make a mark on you. So imagine someone, say a developer's come in and you've changed. Um, some part of this here and, add, and this squiggly line has been added or some extra text has been added. Let's save this file and rerun the test. Now what we're expecting is the test to fail. And that's because obviously there's a difference in the screenshot. So there we are, failed. You can see there's 66 pixels difference. So the ratio of 0.01 .01 of all image pixels are different. If I scroll down now, you can see in the actual inspected, okay, that's still quite obvious, but imagine it wasn't that obvious. You can then use the diff to see, okay, most of it is the same, but we've got this little change here. And then you can go in, you can regenerate your screenshots or whatever we need to do. And to do that, 
to regenerate your screenshots instead of having to like delete the file, recome recome back into it and rerun there. There's a command you can run. And if I close this, what we can say is I've got my dot only on, so it's only going to apply to this test as well. I'm going to say mpx playwright test hyphen hyphen update snapshots. And what this will do is it'll ignore your kind of assertions and it'll just update all the snapshots you want. In this case, it's only running the one test. So great, it's only going to update that one for me. So you can see the test has passed. But what you're going to see now is when I go into this with small difference, there's no, that mark I made has been removed because we've essentially deleted the file and re-uploaded whatever is on the page again. So here we are, completely gone, working perfect. So say you make a change to your web page where you add, say, a new column into this table. So deleting the file and going through, you can just choose what test you want to execute on this and run the NPX Playwright test. Update snapshot argument and it'll update everything for you. And then you're good to go. You can re-execute the test and everything should pass. Perfect. Now then, let's go back into uh, this screenshot. And I actually want to edit it again in Paint. And I'm going to add that mark back in. So let's just save that. Close out of here. Close this. Uh, rerun the test to make sure it does fail. Awesome. All failed. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted is because of that screenshot error. We just saw where we've got this new squiggly line added in. And the reason I want to show you this is because I want to show you how we can have a little bit of variance in our tests. And there's two ways you can do this. You could do it via um, each individual call, or you can set it globally. So I'll just show you via each individual call at the moment. Uh, I actually do want to open up our index html the one that failed because i want to see let's bring that over okay so there's a ratio of 80 pixels different and a ratio of 0 0.01 so what i can do is inside the test here where we've got out to have screenshot we can add a comma and add our object you want to pass through and we can say max diff pixels ratio or max diff pixels. So I'll say ratio and I'm going to set this to 0 0.02 because 0 0.01 was the difference. Now then, if I rerun my test, we should see it passes because we're allowing that threshold of max diff pixels ratio to be set. Once again, if I was to just comment this out, run the test, we're going to see it fails. And that's because there is a slight difference and now the ratio is being hard coded to zero. So we basically say nothing should be different or we can do it by pixels. So let's close this down. We know there's an 80 pixels difference. So let's say um, max diff pixels and we'll say 81. Let's save on that. Now, if I rerun my test, we'd expect in this to pass. Of course, you've got to be very careful with this because in our case, we know that there's a difference here, but you could have something that shouldn't be there. But because you've set this kind of variance, this allowance threshold, it's allowing you to not worry about the max diff pixels and that could end up not finding bugs for you. So be very careful with it, but definitely something I wanted to show as part of this video. Now, this is done just for this individual assertion. But what if you said as a standard, you don't care if there's, say, a 100 max diff pixels or anything less than 100 you don't want to worry about well instead of doing this in each individual assertion you can do it inside the playwright config so let's open up the config and we have the expect section here so inside this expect we can actually put uh to have screenshot and we'll say max diff pixels to 100. And then that will apply for all of our screenshot tests that use this to have screenshot method. So now then if I get rid of it in here, we should see our test will still pass even though there's 80 pixels different. It's because we've set globally that we don't want to be worried about or don't fail on anything that's under 100. It's just really useful to know. You can do the same with diff diff pixels ratio, uh, have a little play around with it and see how it all fits. Awesome. So we've covered how to kind of check 
um, pages, full pages, locators, how to mask things, set in kind of variance allowances for um, the pixel difference. Last thing I want to show you is how you can do this across kind of different viewports and everything as well. Because this is where your visual testing is really going to come in handy, is where you need to check kind of the look of your pages on different devices. In Playwright make this easy for us. We can do this all by the config. So you can see I've got this Chromium config set here, but what I'm gonna do is copy this and paste down below. I'm gonna name this say iPhone. Uh, we don't really need to worry about base URL. Um, inside devices then I'm gonna say, let's use an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now then let's save that. And this test here, we can rerun this test again, and what I'm actually do is remove the... Ah, it doesn't matter. We can keep the pixel difference. Um, going back to it then, I'm going to rerun this test, but instead of running it for the Chromium one, I'm going to say project equals, so there we are, iPhone. I'm going to hit enter on this. We're going to see a failure because, like I said, these screenshots get appended with the project names, and this is where Playwright has done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Let's close this down. It failed because we didn't have the golden screenshot because everything is marked up as Chromium. But here you can see there's two. You've got one marked as Chromium, and then you've got one marked as iPhone, which is the project. And uh, you may not actually see it here, actually, so this probably won't be the best test. But what I want to show you is how it does the different viewports for you. So tell you what, let's we'll 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 delete that file for the moment, and instead of scoping it by the um, locator, let's do it by the page instead. We'll keep the same name. But of course, you'd want to change this. If I rerun it now, it's going to fail because we deleted the screenshot. Could have just used the update command, to be honest. But what I wanted to show you here is the difference. So this is the page in the in the iPhone project, which is using the device of iPhone. You can see the difference here is when you're looking on the mobile view that we don't have the nav bus spanned out. We have this kind of burger collapse menu. And just to compare it against what Chromium give us, it looked like this. So you see in here. Without really making any code changes, without any real effort, we've just now got visual tests for an iPhone 11 and visual tests for desktop Chromium. So this is really powerful and really cool. I definitely suggest implementing these in your test packs. It's going to save you a lot of time. And to be honest, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Of course, you have the comparisons in your index as well to see what's failing and passing. You've got quick ways to update the screenshots. Um, there's extra things you can do with snapshots as well. So you can actually compare things like text files against text on the page. I'll probably cover that off in a future video. It's worth looking at the Playwright documentation for this as well, because it's going to give you extra um, option properties that you can change. I'll put a link into the description. If there is anything you see that you would like some extra information on, you think would be worthy of a video, please put a comment below. Like and subscribe is appreciated. Thank you for watching.